Because I'm on a city water source, I like to run my brew water a day beforehand. This gives it the opportunity to heat up or to warm up to room temperature, but also allows it to off-gas any chemicals that might be in there. I also treat it with Camden. That's up to you. Otherwise, running your brew water the day before is a great way to split up a long brew day. If you got grains from the home brew store, you probably had them milled there. If you buy in bulk, you need to measure out your own grains, and then you need to crush them. You can use a Victoria mill. In a pinch, you could use a blender, but I wouldn't advise it. My favorite here is the Monster Mill. We've milled our grains and we've run our water. We're on location in the laundry room here. We've got the mash tun in place. While the strike water is heating, there's a couple of preparations I need to do in the mash tun. So let's go take a look. Remember, in the mash tun hybrid system, I've got a strainer, which I put face down on the stopper. Then I take muslin with the bungee cord. and I line the mash tun. As soon as the strike water comes up to temperature, you'll rejoin me and we'll mash in. I've got the mash tun all set up and I got my strike water coming up to temperature. Remember we're going for 77 C on the strike temperature. Something I like to do is called preheating the mash tun. I've got a liter of freshly boiled water here what you do is you add it to the mash tun, making sure the valve's closed, of course, and it is. And the purpose of this is to preheat the mash tun and bring it up to temperature. If this is something you want to do, definitely keep it as part of your routine. If it's something you don't want to do, commit to not doing it. I have found that it really averages out the, the temperature needed in the summertime versus the wintertime. It's one more variable that I can control when it comes to hitting the perfect mash temperature. Of course, when preheating your mash tun, it's really important to put the lid on. All right, we're up to 77C for strike water. We've got the valve closed, we've got a preheated mash tun. We've got our grain back here ready to go. I've got my baler. Now from here on out, kind of the time is of the essence because we don't want to lose a lot of temperature. You're going to see kind of a fury of activity, so try to keep up. Here we go. Remember I said we like to go maybe a third water in and third grain in. And you want to give it a stir to avoid those dough balls that we talked about. And for the last dose of water, because I can't get my baler in there, so I dump that last bit. And then the final scoop of grain. Remember, name of the game here is getting everything wet and even temperature. If I'm too hot here, I'll continue to stir to lose a little bit of heat off the top. If I'm too cool, you could hit it with a liter of emergency water. So we've stirred a bit and we're at 69.5, so a little bit short of our goal of 70, but 
that's good enough. It's my recommendation to always have emergency water on hand because as the saying goes, a washed pot never boils. So from this moment on, we're going to close her up and we're going to start our mash. We're going to do 60 minutes, but I'm going to start a timer for 30 minutes because we'll reconvene then. In the meantime, it's a good idea to take your boil pot and your chiller and get it in position. Remember, the big pot is going to catch your running, so you don't want to make that mistake if you've got two different sized pots. See you in 30 minutes. Okay, we're midpoint in the mash. There's two things that we need to do. First, we're going to lift up the heat, and for our own records, we'll take a temperature reading. Okay, it's been an hour total, and we're going to check our temperature just to see kind of how much we've lost over that hour. And it's somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, about one degree. And that might be a hot spot or that might be a cold spot. That's mostly for our own records. Right now, as we've got the sparge water heating, we're going to kick open the valve and collect our runnings. And it's important that if you notched your pot, that it's looking right back at you, at you because when this fills, it's going to be too heavy to move. And we'll come back after we've collected all our runnings. So I've added all the sparge water into the mash tun, and I'm going to go ahead and cut the valve open. And we're going to stop our louder when we get to 48 liters. Remember, that's all we need. Anything past that, we'd have to boil down, and it'll be lower quality, weaker runnings. So I'll see you in about 20 to 30 minutes when this is finished. Something you can do to coax the extra word out of the bag here is to pick it up and take a board or take your wood spoon and hang it from this. That will keep it from acting like a sponge. In addition, at the end of your mash tun, you can take, say, a bowl and lift it up and pitch it so that the wort slides down the mash tun towards your board. We've been boiling for a bit, and remember, this recipe doesn't have a 60-minute addition, so we're going with a 20. We're at the 44 liter mark, which is pretty much where we want to finish at. So I'm putting in the 20 minute centennial and a clarifier in here. I'll see you in 20 minutes for the flame out. We're finishing up the boil. It's a great time to mix some sanitizer and tie up some loose ends. This 5 liter jug is a great way to measure 5 liters worth of water. And if I'm using star sand, I know I need 1.25 milliliters per liter. So I can finish this up and have a batch of sanitizer. Put this off to the side. And at the same time, when I get this, I'll sort of siphon from up here down to the jugs and get this nice and sanitized too. Now that I got the sanitizer up high, I can start a siphon. And it goes pretty fast with this half inch thermoplastic. The most important thing is I make sure I got sanitizer through the hose. Although I will leave the hose in here as well. It's a good idea to put any instruments you need, except for the glass ones, except for the ones that can break. This kind of a sandy bucket slash fermenter in the future. Star sand needs wet time, it only needs like 15 seconds, but just the same, I like to keep a batch ready, because you never know when you're going to need to sanitize an instrument last minute. And the same thing for this second fermenter. Put the lid on, give it a shake. Let's go check on that boil. Okay, I've just turned off the heat stick and we're going to do our hop steep. Hops go in. Give it a quick stir, and we're going to cover it up. And this apparently keeps in 
the aromatics. And you might notice that I still got the stir spoon in there, and I have for like the last 20 minutes. What that's going to do is going to sanitize it from the heat, and I'm going to continue to use it to chill down the work after our 20 minute steep. See you in 20. In the time I've seen you, I've hooked up the work chiller, and I'm going to start cooling. Since our tap water is pretty warm, this is going to take a while. Okay, I've chilled the wort down to pitching temperature. I've reset the mash tun. I've filled it with a water bath. And everything from this point out needs to be sanitized because we're post-boil. And we're down to kind of a, a vulnerable temperature. So I got my hydrometer here. It's sanitized. It'll take a reading. And I'm at 1046, which is spot on. After this, we'll transfer from here to our fermenters. All right, it's a little bit awkward, but I'm in the laundry closet here. I'm going to transfer from the boil kettle to my sanitized fermenters with my sanitized hose and my sanitized hands. So to start a siphon easily, of course, you can put your mouth on it, but why risk it if we don't need to? If you run the hose inside, and it's fully submerged, you put your thumb over the top, you'll create a siphon that way. And remember, this is the, pretty much one of the only spots you want to purposely introduce, introduce oxygen to the equation. So some guys will take a sanitized stainless steel strainer and put it over top of this for extra splash. Just the same, I feel like a, uh, a nice demon drop with a little shake at the end will get you pretty much there. We'll also shake it at the end before we seal it up, or as we seal it up, and when we move it up to the mash tun. It's only take a couple minutes. These need to be aerated because the boil drives off the oxygen. I'll do this for a minute. If you can hoist the fermenter to your mash tun at about five feet, five and a half feet, that's great. I prefer to use the washing machine as an intermediary. I have already run my water bath here, and the last thing for me to do is to move these up into the mash tun. The absolute last thing to do is to take off the top and put a packet of your favorite yeast in. Followed by putting on the lid. And what this will do, it'll help keep some of that unwanted light out. You can also drape a t-shirt on the edges to do the same thing. I'll see you in seven days when we keg this.